Where's my little buddy? When are, we, when are you going to grow up? Did you know that last night I, I had this revelation that there was scripture fulfilled here last night? And it made my heart strangely. They hear you. Thank you. You remember how hot it was here last night? And then we turned on the air conditioner, and then people started saying it's cold. Well, the Lord said in Revelation chapter 3 that he wished that we were hot or cold. And we fulfilled scripture last night. Thank you. Are you going to fulfill scripture and share us some extra meaning tonight of the scripture itself to make it real for us? I hope so. I hope so, too. Thank you. Nothing. Try it again. Nothing. No, oh, okay. okay. <clears throat> Whenever I go to Baghdad, I go to church on the Sabbath. And one Sabbath, I saw a lady. Her nose was different, like the Hittite nose. So I said to her, why do you have that strange nose? And she said, I'm an Assyrian. And I was so happy. She, she is here tonight. She didn't hold this against me. Anyway, I went to her house and she told me how Saddam Hussein came there one evening and where he sat. So I love the Iraqi people and I've met quite a few here. Lebanese, Lebanese people, Syrian people. It's wonderful to be here. My, when I talk to you, my heart is... Yeah. Tell me, this capital, where is it? It starts with a S. Syria. Yes. Walter and myself visited this interesting museum and we found incredible uh, stuff here. This is an alphabet that was developed 150 years before Moses started writing the Torah. Very interesting, was discovered at a place called Yuharit, modern Rosh Shamra. Names like King Hazael, mentioned in the Bible, were discovered on clay tablets and Assyrian monuments. And when I read this, I love the Bible. Something happens to my heart, it's God's book. Well, this is, can anybody tell me what nationality this is? Drus. They have these pants. You find them in the northern part of Israel as well. Well, we ate healthy foods, as you can see. But look at this. This is Walter buying sweets and eat it. So we addressed him and he moved on and he ate some corn. He's a man that's willing to reform. <laughs> this was a few years ago, as you can see on the picture. Uh, by the way, which, which mosque is this? Oh my yacht. Look at the carpets. Beautiful. Look at the ceiling. Tell me who was buried here in the Omayyad Mosque? John the Baptist, a brilliant audience. Well, we're going to visit Bab Sharki. 
Can anybody tell me what's that, the English name for Bab Sarki? Bab is gate, gate into street called Straight, and little church of Ananias, Ananias is also here. We are walking here in one of the busy streets of Damascus. Uh, it says in Acts chapter 9, 11 and 12, So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight. This picture was taken in the street called Straight. And inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. Walter is my modern Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. Wonderful. And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. This is the little church of Ananias. And uh, I hope the picture is clear. What do you see? Yeah, Paul in a basket. It says in Acts 9.23, Now after many days were passed, the Jews plotted to kill him. But their plot became known to Saul, Paul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down through the wall in a large basket. There you see it, that there's a close-up. And then it says in 2 Corinthians 12, 32, In Damascus, the governor under Arietas. We're going to study the history of Arietas. I like to read about names and then start researching. And a new world opens. There's no book like the Bible. Spend more time with this book. Uh, was guarding the city of Damascus with a garrison, desiring to arrest me. But I was let down in a basket. You would say basket. Basket. Okay. Through a window in the wall and escaped from his hands. Was there really a king by the name of Rietas as recorded in Scripture? This was denied, but the Bible is always true. Search and you will find. Can we get confirmation from outside sources that the book, the Bible, is authentic, correct? Well, this is called the Sikh. Has anybody been to the Sikh? Nobody? I invite you to come with me to the Sikh next year. Petra, that's the entrance to Petra, the rose-red Nabataean city is one of the seven wonders of the world. I don't know if you recognize some of the people here. Can I get their names? Walter and Sonica, yes. And Sonica is standing next to something very interesting. If you look carefully, you'll see that this is a man leading a camel. There you see its feet. There's no time to tell you what you see if you walk down this 1.2 kilometer to the entrance of this marvelous rose-red city. The spade of the archaeologists dug very deep in Petra and the excavations are still going on. What did they find? Well, they discovered interesting coins here. And when you find a coin, you read it and you date it and then you know exactly who lived here, who they were, etc. Coins telling the story that the Bible is true. We're searching for which king? Arietas. What is his Nabataean name? Harit. Harit. Let me give you a brief history of this man. Uh, he was a Nabataean king who reigned in Petra from 9 BC to 40 AD. 
you think this is an important slot in biblical history? 9 BC to 40 AD. I was excited when I read about the time in which he reigned. His full title as depicted on numerous inscriptions was Arietas for King of the Nabataeans. And then I like this little phrase. Friend of his people. The greatest gift we can give one another is friendship. Yeah, I like this. Yeah. Man, I got such a lot of hugs tonight from men and ladies. This is wonderful. My heart was strangely warmed. <laughs> and you know, a gentle touch has got healing power. There are so many lonely people, especially elderly people, nobody touched them. If you see somebody old here, just touch them and give them a hug. Recent excavations in front of the Alkazna Farun, that means the treasury of Pharaoh, cries out, the Bible is true. Archaeology always confirms the authenticity of this wonderful book. His full title, as depicted on numerous inscriptions, was Arietas, king of the... of the Nabataeans, friend of his people, yes. Try and make more friends. Your world will enlarge. People are the most wonderful creatures in the cosmos. God's speciality. Befriend more people. Just look at this. Being the most powerful neighbor of Judea, which is just across the Jordan, he frequently took part in the state affairs of that country and was influenced in shaping the destiny of its rulers. So here we have inside information concerning his influence on his neighbors, the Jews, the Judeans. Look again at the date. 940. What great events transpired during these years? The greatest event, the crucifixion of Christ, the birth of Christ, is the resurrection. Do you think this man knew about this? Yes. Do you recognize this place? It starts with a ma. And it ends with a da. <coughs> Brilliant. Masada. Do you recognize this girl? It's Loretta. Who ruled in Judea when Jesus was born? Yes. So here we bring in more information concerning Arietas. They were contemporaries. They discovered coins on which the name Herod was written. Bible is true. Which prophet announced the imminent appearance of the Messiah? <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. My second sip. By the way, there was a first Elijah, second one, and Walter is the <laughs> third. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, Pastor Bob. <coughs> Where was he preaching? <coughs> I want more detail. John 1, 28. <coughs> Excuse me. These things were done in Betabara, beyond the Jordan where John was baptizing. So, here's another name. 
Where is the site? And my research went a little further. Could this be the place? There you've got the name, Betabara, beyond the Jordan. Now before moving on, let's ask the archaeologists if they have found a place called Betabara. It means the place of crossing. So many people crossed here where John the Baptist was baptizing. He was an evangelist. This is uh, St. George's Church in Madaba. Let's walk in. This is the oldest map. It dates from 600 AD. <coughs> Okay. Try and locate places in on this map. What would you say is this? River Jordan. And this? It's the Dead Sea. Uh it's written in Greek, this is Jericho. Jericho? So, he was baptizing in Petabara. Now, how do, you, how do we locate the place? Well, it's just over there. Let me get a close-up. They are Bethabara. Opposite Jericho, Opposite Mount Nebu, this is the place fr from where John uh, Moses was buried here. And from the same spot, Elijah went up to heaven. Many things happened right here. And this map helps us to locate the area. And when you read the Bible, you have links and the story becomes wonderful. It's a beautiful book. Read it, research it. Now much archaeological work has been done in this previous military zone. It was only demilitarized a little while ago. So the archaeologists went in, they read the ancient literature, and they identified Betabara with the help of the Madaba play, Madaba ancient map of the Holy Land. This is the place where John was baptized, where he baptized his converts. You know, when you come to these sites, you've got all the evidences. The Bible becomes more personal. Aretas, number four, what was his Nabatean name? Harit. He had to cross the Jordan when visiting Judea and he saw John the Baptist. He heard him preaching. He listened to the Elijah message, the second Elijah. And I've got a lecture on the first Elijah, archaeology, soteriology, eschatology, typology. It's a wonderful story, but you know, you invite Walter and myself for a week. We've got so much to tell you, share with you. I'm a little better now, eh? I think somebody prayed. Thank you, Pastor Bob. This is also the site where King Herod, the Tetrarch, passed from Mukavir, a fortress built by his father, Herod the Great, to Tiberias. This was the route. So all these great men passed John the Baptist. He had a great message for many people. And this helps you to appreciate these Bible characters a little more. You know exactly where he preached and how many people passed there. Here at Betabara, John the Baptist rebuked him Herod, the great, uh, Herod Antipas for breaking up his brother's marriage. You know, the Elijah message 
Walter listened to this, has got the courage to say, you are the man. It takes a lot of nerves. But we need Elijah messengers. Please say amen. amen. Thank you. Now what does Josephus say about Arietas? So we're first going to look at Josephus, Flavius, and then we're going to see what the Bible says. Herod the Tetrarch had married the daughter of Arietas. Now this is becoming more interesting. Arietas and had lived with her a great while. Another source I checked said for 25 years they were married, they had no children. But once when he was on his way to Rome, he lodged with his half-brother, also named Herod, but who had a different mother, the high priest Simon's daughter. There he fell in love with Herodias, this latter Herod's wife, who was the daughter of their brother Aristobulus and the sister of Agrippa the Great. I think they went out for dinner and then it happened. Always travel with your wife. It's the safest. Anyway, shall we go back to the Bible to check if Josephus is speaking the truth? Luke 3, 19 and 20. And with many other exhortations he preached to the people, but Herod the Tetrarch, being rebuked by him concerning Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done, also added this above all, that he shut John up in prison. Josephus, the Bible, they're in harmony. My heart was... When I read this verse from the Bible, man, I'm so proud of this book. You can defend its authenticity. This is Mukavir, where Herod the Tetrarch had his fortress. I've got a lecture on this. John the Baptist. I feel so sorry for him when I visit this site. This is where John the Baptist lost faith. And the way Jesus treated him. This is a great story. Does this interesting history remind us of someone else who also lived here? Hulda, the daughter of Arietas, lived here for 25 years. John the Baptist was here. Herod the Great was here. There's such a lot of history right here. Let's ask Josephus to tell us more about Aritas. Aritas also had a quarrel with Herod about their boundaries in the area of Gabalus. So they raised armies on both sides and prepared for war, sending their generals to fight instead of themselves. Identify it. Yes, Kerbet Qumran, the ruins of the ancient city of the Essenes, Qumran. Ah, oh, there's so much I can tell you about this. Aretas IV, says the historians, invaded Judea and captured territories along the west bank of the Jordan River, including the areas around Qumran. There you've got it. This was long before the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls. That's a wonderful story. Arieta seems to have had two wives, apparently success, successively, r rather than together. Keep on praying. <coughs> the first was called Huldu. Huldu. And the second, Shakilat. Shakilat. So if you want to give your daughter a good name, Shaki Lat seems, from, seems good. Yeah. If you're working on a computer, there are links. When you read the Bible, there are links that take you to different related people 
and places. Bible works on the same principle. This is, can anybody tell me where this is? This is Herodion, where Herod the Great was buried. In his will, he said, when I die, kill all the important people so that they will weep. And people will think they will weep because I died. He was a strange man. Well, let's go to a royal link while you are looking at the Herodion where King Herod the Great was buried. The Bible mentions his name. Archaeologists discovered many evidence of the existence of Herod the Great and recently his sarcophagus, his tomb, was found there. There had been ties between Herod the Great and the Nabataeans. Herod was the son of an Edomanian Edomite father and the Nabataean mother. Petra was founded or, or captured by Esau from the Horites. Horite means cave. They thought these were cave people. But they discovered a new site in Syria which says they were a sophisticated civilization. Believe the Bible. Where do you think he spent, that's Herod the Great, most of his early years? At Petra, says the scholars. At the Edomite slash Nabataean capital, Petra. Now Sonica looks so calm and collected, but at times she can, she can be so happy and throwing her arms. Do you recognize uh, Sonica? If you want to, I can ask her to come and stand here. Yeah. Now when Antipas was forced to flee Jerusalem, he sought to secure help from Rome. So this king had to flee. He is said to have attempted to find asylum in Petra. And I think this is where he fell in love with the daughter of King Arietas. He was repulsed by the king of the Nabataeans, Arieta IV. So remember, there's only one mention of this man's name in the Bible, but when you go to the links, you get a tremendous story. Now later when Herod received the kingship of the Jewish state from the Roman Senate and returned to Jerusalem, various political relations existed between him and the Nabataeans. However, as the Nabataeans continued to expand their sphere of influence, skirmishes soon began to take place along their common border. The two countries are adjacent to each other. In an attempt to end the fighting, Arietas married one of his daughters, Huldu, also called Phasaelus, to Herod Antipas, a son of Herod the Great. I think this was a great marriage feast. Wow. King of Petra, King of the Jews. After a marriage of 25 years, Herod Antipas divorced Phasaelus or Hulda, as she, she is also called. I think when he returned from Rome, he said to her, I don't love you anymore. You do not understand me. Now I work with people, marriages, and this is the usual answer. I don't love you anymore. That's nonsense, man. He fell in love with somebody else. <laughs> so the marital colors faded. This is Petra. Have you had such an experience? You thought you married an angel? Can you recall the name of Herod's new wife and her daughter? Herodias and Salome. The first Elijah had a, had a problem with who? Jezebel. The second Elijah, John the Baptist, had a problem with how, had a problem with how many women? Two. Herodias and Salome. The third Elijah, the 
the prostitute on the beast has got how many daughters? Many. So type, type, anti-type. It's marvelous to study this. Less well known is that he spurned his Nabataean wife, went quietly back home to Petra. She left Mukabir. She came back to her father and mother. That's sad. Can you appreciate her pain of loneliness, of rejection? I think rejection is, is the most severe pain a person can experience. <clears throat> Now, how do you think a father react when Herod Antipas divorced his daughter? How would you react? He launched an expedition against his former son-in-law and new enemy. No longer was he a son-in-law, he was an enemy. Mr. Donkey, this is a Petra donkey. What is the recipe for making lifelong enemies and misery? The donkey says, divorce your wife and break up another couple's marriage. <laughs> you know, walking in Petra, I thought of the hurtful drama that expired right here in Petra. Just look at the ceiling of this one room. The enjoyment of sin is short-lived. It never satisfies. It leaves you more hunger or thirsty than before. The painful consequences lasts as long as we live. And the problem is we cannot forget. Only when you get Alzheimer's will you forget. So Petra pleads with us, stay with your spouse. I know it's difficult. Your character will definitely develop through hardships of adjustment and forgiveness. And to the ladies, I just want to say, men are not to be understood, but to be loved. <laughs> Try and remember that. <clears throat> If you are contemplating divorce, please think again. The colors of faithfulness are lasting and extremely beautiful. To see an old couple still like this couple. You, you had a, lots of, a lot of problems with him, eh? He looks hard-headed. <laughs> But keep on loving it. Remember, men are meant to be loved, not to be understood. Thank you. Roman colonnade in Petra. Arietas IV assembled an army and defeated Herod Antipas' army. But the Nabataean king was unable to do more. The Romans decided to come to Herod's defense and defend his honor and the honor of the empire. So... One name in the Bible gives you a volume of interesting history. Some historians feel that during a brief revival of Nabataean rule in Damascus under Arietas IV, the Apostle Paul made his famously undignified exit from the country. And there are scholars which says that Paul lived in the proximity of Petra. That is just speculation. Second Corinthians, we've read it already. In, the Damas in Damascus, the governor and the Arietas. There's the name. And now archaeology tells us more about this man. Where is this place? I consulted many sources on the origin of the Nabataeans but information is limited. And I'm going to tell you why. This is uh, in the southern part of Syria, Bosra. They were traders, these Nabataeans. You know traders? Well, they were traders. 
who never lost a deal. They never lost a deal, says the material that we've read. Ancient sources speak about the anger of civilizations because of it. Uh, in order to stay out of trouble, they destroyed all the transactions. So you couldn't take them to court. They destroyed the documents. Maybe you've encountered the Nabataean culture in your business dealings with some people. And sometimes in our country, the court documents get lost. So this trick of the Nabataeans is still in existence today. While doing research on the history of this interesting civilization, I thought of the message of Daniel 9 and 16. And uh, I'm not going to give you a Bible study on this. What happened on the Day of Atonement? The documents got lost. Through the righteousness of Christ, we shall stand before God pardoned as though we had never sinned. <laughs> We're getting another chance. Not as forgiven criminals, but as if we had never sinned. He's going to delete the great heavenly computer. Press the, your folder, delete, and then again, the trash bin, delete, and it's going to be gone forever. The record of our confessed sins will get lost forever. So if there's something you haven't confessed, he's waiting for you. Or the person you've offended, just go to the person and say, I'm sorry. It's hard, but it's so heartwarming. The devil, our accuser in the heavenly court case, will not be able to produce evidences against our sinful past. Like the Nabataeans who destroyed all the documents, God is going to destroy all documents. I visited a place called Wadi Rum, and here you have a map of the ancient world, and when safaris passed here, camel safaris, they put a stone here and there to show the direction they are moving. These people were clever. Why did these ancient civilizations disappear? Obadiah says, 10 and 11, For violence against your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you, and you shall be cut off forever in the day that you stood on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried captive his forces, when foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, even you were as one of them. In 586, Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the city, and the poor Judeans fled. And like the citizens of Tyre, they caught these prisoners, murdered them, and took the little they had in their possession. But you should not have gazed on the day of your brother, in the day of his captivity. Nor should you have rejoiced over the children of Judea in the day of their destruction. Nor should you have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Never rejoice in the shame and pain of another. The Edomites disappeared because of this. The Tyrians disappeared because of this. <coughs> You should not have entered the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Indeed, you should not have gazed on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. May God help us to be loving and lovable Christians. And this just goes on and on. For as you drank on my holy mountain, 
so shall all the nations drink continually, yes. They shall drink and swallow, and they shall be as though they had never been. May God help us to have kind hearts. Kind hearts. <coughs> Does God regard rejoicing in another's calamity in a very serious light? Yes. You know, when I first discovered this in my research on Petra, I said, please, God, help me. I never realized that I was sinning. Because we rejoice in our enemy's calamities. Man, we are so wicked. Looking at these rocks, I pray, dear Lord, give me a heart that feels the pain of those who hate me. Give me the love you have for people who are suffering in the consequences of their own doing. Uh, let me end with the story of the Virgin. Maybe you've heard it before. Every year, a virgin was taken as a human sacrifice. This is what the Bible says. And this is the steps leading to Jabal Matba. Jabal is... Can the Arab-speaking people tell me what is Jabal? Mountain, yes. This mountain is called Jabba. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just think of the pain the parents experienced as their daughter was locked up that evening by the priests. The Bible speaks about human sacrifices and Jephthah's daughter may have been sacrificed at the same site. It's the biggest in the Middle East. Sacred pillars, El Uza and Dushara. At Zip Atuf. The Arab-speaking people know what that means. Wherever you find an obelisk, this is the sign in archaeology that in the, in the proximity of the pillar, humans were sacrificed. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, Erectus Follis, and cut down their Asherah poles. Now, you will see a white spot over there. That's the tomb, the traditional tomb of Aaron, who died there. Moses walked with him up there. He died in his brother's arms. It's a very emotional study when you look at the life of these two brothers. So this is the sacrificial site at Petra. Before sunset, the victim... The virgin was laid down on this platform, the biggest, as I said, in the Middle East. Parents down at Wadi Faraza, you've got two Wadis, Wadi Musa, Wadi Faraza, were weeping. Their religion was a cruel religion. So they waited for the sun to touch the top of the obelisk. Then the priest would plunge his knife into the heart and ran up to this Sunday square Walter is standing in order to appease the anger of the gods al Uza and Ashura they had to sacrifice a virgin that's a cruel religion when I stood here I realized the true and the false gospels on Jabba Matpa, human sacrifices endeavored to win God's favor. On Calvary, Christ offered his son in order to win our favor. Please enjoy the message of the gospel.